Good morning. I'm Mrs. Ansi Stein, your tutor for PHE 22 for this year. Welcome to this presentation for this subject. I hope you enjoy your studies and that you will be successful this year. Success comes with dedicated, consistent work. My contact details are 81 277-5321, that's the cell phone number, and ansistain at hotmail.com, that's my email address. You are welcome to contact me from Mondays till Saturdays, from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. You can either phone me or SMS or email me. In the latter case, I can send you a detailed answer. Please feel free to ask if anything is unclear or if you have problems regarding your subject. I'm willing to assist as far as I can. I'm going to discuss the most important facts of each unit separately. You will then be able to follow the content discussed if you page through your study guide while I'm discussing the content. Please take note that this presentation is not a discussion of any exam paper, but of the most important content for the whole year. As an introduction to the study guide, I'm shortly going to explain some information regarding the guide itself. When you turn to the front of your, the study guide, you will find a detailed table of contents. Here you will find the headings of the complete content and you will be able to have an overview of your subject for the year. Take time to read through it, to familiarize yourself with the content you are going to study. On page 7, you will find very important information regarding the time you are required to spend with the subject in order to be a successful student. Because this is distant teaching, it is very important that you spend adequate time right throughout the year with your study material. To just start studying before the exams will not be wise and it will be hard to write the exams successfully. I recommend that you spend time every day with your studies, even half an hour every day will be worthwhile. Consistency is the key to being successful, a successful student. When you turn the page you will find action verbs. These words form the key of the assignment and also the exam paper. For example, when you are requested to analyze facts, you will have to present facts in detail. And when you have to outline, you have to only give an overview and present main features. Make sure to know what is expected of you when these verbs are present in your assignment and exam paper. Also, read through 9 and 10. When you turn to Unit 1, you firstly find the table of content of this unit and then the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are an indication of what content you will find in this specific unit. Learning activities follow the learning outcomes. In these learning activities, you will find specific questions regarding the content of the specific unit. It will be wise to firstly try to answer these questions on your own and thereafter look at the answers which are at the end of each unit. When studying for the exams, use these questions to study because they form the core of the content and are very important. 
Do not to, uh, forget to also study the assignment you completed because some of these questions will also be asked in the exams. So let us start with each unit separately now. Follow in your guide as I discuss the content. Let us look at unit one. In 1.2 in your study guide, the basic physiological functioning of the human body is set out. The body consists of many systems, each with its specific function. Each system of the body is named here and also explained in detail. Know the names as well as their descriptions. We're finished with 1.2 now, so let's go to 1.4. The meanings of fitness terminology are discussed. For example, flexibility is the ability of the various joints in the body to move through their range of motion. Now, there are six more fitness terminology. Make sure to know them. Physical and health education is about health and the current international health problems experienced by young people but also by adults are discussed in detail. Malnutrition is a huge problem in some areas and this makes children vulnerable to diseases and early death. Overweight and obesity are also forms of malnutrition with serious health consequences and are increasing. So all the health problems are discussed in this way in detail in 1.6 and you should study to know them. Note that I only mention some of the points so please have a look then at 1.9 where the influences of physical exercises on emotional stability are discussed. Read through it but also study to know the facts uh, about the benefits of physical education to your learners. This is very important in 1.9. One of the positive outcomes of physical education is that children will have to learn how to function in a group when they play in a group sport activity, like for instance rugby and netball. In 1.10, it is discussed how a coach can develop teamwork, for example, by setting the tone by not allowing players to be negative towards other players, by being consistent in their decisions and actions. In fact, there are various ways on how to develop teamwork as set out in 1.10. Study to know them all. But a coach should also be able to monitor his or her own fitness. See 1.12 for that. For instance, you should measure your own heart rate. You should determine how active you are. Monitor your food intake. Test your muscular endurance. In fact, there are a few more ways on how to monitor your own fitness. Read them and study them in detail. Now this concludes my discussion of the most important facts for Unit 1. At the end of Unit 1 you will find the answers or then feedback of the learning activities at the beginning of the unit. As mentioned before this is very important to know by heart. All units in the study guide work like this. Let us turn to Unit 2 now, 
where you will also find the table of content, the learning outcomes and learning activities as discussed previously. This unit is about the aspects of movement theory and games for different phases of learners. Very important to take note here are the categories of fundamental movement. You see them in 2.1. There are three categories that movement skills can be divided into. Divided into namely location, manipulation and stability. Let us first look at lo uh, locomotion. Locomotor motor, uh, movements are the movements where the body is transported in a horizontal or vertical direction from one point in space to another. In other words, when you run, you transport your body, body vertical, that's upright, from the store, starting point to the end line. Other examples of locomotion are jumping and skipping. The second one, manipulation, are gross motor manipulative movements which involve giving force to objects or receiving force from objects. Like when you hit a tennis ball, you give force to an object, that ball. And when you catch a baseball, you receive force from an object, namely the baseball. Read about stability also in 2.1. So we go to 2.2 now, where the motor development components are discussed in detail. There are four components, namely body awareness, spatial awareness, directional awareness, and temporal awareness. Each of these components are discussed in detail. So do not just know the names, but also what each one of them entail, as set out in detail here. That is in 2.2. When a child is born, he or she develops in phases of motor development. A baby has to develop certain skills because they cannot, for instance, walk immediately or eat without any help from the start. So the first phase is called the reflex behavior phase, lasting from the uterus of the mother until about one year, where the movements of the body are involuntary done without thinking what to do and how. In other words, upon reflex. Like when sucking, which is a survival reflex movement. That's the first phase. Phase two is called the rudimentary movement ability phase. And that lasts from zero to two years. Where the if infant makes their first voluntary movements, which lay the foundation for more complex movements. These movement abilities depend on the development and maturity of the infant. Now from two to seven years, the fundamental movement patterns are developed. These movement patterns develop from the previous phase and they now experiment with their bodies and what they are potentially able to do. Like learning to walk, to run or to throw something. They can move in different ways now. Thereafter, the general movement skills are developed and that is from eight to 10 years. They are now in a primary school and they try to be accurate in their movement skills, like when playing in a certain sport. Now, phase five involves specific movement skills, and that is from 11 till 13 years of age.
where further extension of their general movement skills take place. More complex sport skills are now required from children, so their skills are refined in this phase. The last motor development skill is the specialized skill development phase. It starts from about 14 years of age and lasts until adulthood. It is the development of isolated, in other words, specific skills and for higher levels of performance. But care should be taken not to start too early in, develop, uh, in developing these specific skills. You now have an overview of the different phases of motor development, but read and study them as set out in detail in 2.3. Let us turn to 2.6 now, where activities which require muscular, that's muscle, strength are discussed. I'm only going to discuss the first one, but you should acquaint yourself with all of them in 2.6. First one, freestanding exercises. They do not require any equipment, like a ball or a racket, but only the environment, like a wall, a bench and a floor. For example, the activity measuring worm, see 2.6.1 for description what this activity is about. Another activity is leg change and also wall push up where you use the wall, wall, in other words the environment, as help and not a ball or a racket or any other equipment. Make sure to know how these exercises should be performed and also the names of the headings in 2.6. We are going to turn to 2.30 now where methodology issues in physical education are discussed. This means that the different methods on how to present physical education are discussed in detail. The first one is organizational instruction, where a class is presented according to specific instructions in order to run smoothly. The children need to be organized in groups Equipment needs to be identified, distri distributed and packed away after activities. And then there is informal instruction where they are told what they are going to be doing, but this does not necessar necessarily mean the child will be told how to do something. They are told what they are going to do, but not how. But there are guidelines on how to instruct them. Firstly, you just present one idea at a time. You provide them with a reminder word or phrase. You will instruct them based on your observation of them. When you see what they are capable of doing, while you closely observe them, you will know what to instruct them to do. You can demonstrate them the movement, the skill or at the activity. And the location is very important. Firstly, the teacher demonstrates the whole activity and thereafter you focus on the parts of the skill. So, they should firstly know what the complete activity entails before you break it up into smaller parts on how to do it. Sometimes it is better for children to see the activity at normal speed and then slowly. Verbal focus by the teacher entails that the teacher tells the learner where to look for specific parts during the demonstration. This helps 
to direct the child's attention because they do not pay close attention all the time. I now have discussed the whole concept of methods on how to present physical education activities. Make sure to understand and know this part of physical education which is of utmost importance in order to be a successful physical education teacher. And this concludes Unit 2. Look and study again the learning activity answers which appear at the end of the unit. We're going to Unit 3 now, and this is about gymnastic exercises. We are going to look closely at certain specific exercises in order to be able to teach them in detail and correctly to learners. An exercise taught wrongly to learners can cause injuries to them and have serious consequences to you as teacher, so these activities should be known by heart by the teacher. In 3.2, it is explained in detail how to perform backward rolls from four starting positions, namely, while working on the floor, from a standing position, and by grabbing the back of their legs, and lastly, by using a wedge-inclined mat to roll backwards on a gym mat that is lower. I'm just going to mention that again, the four starting positions. Working on the floor from a starting position by grabbing the back of their legs and lastly, by using a wedge inclined mat to roll backwards on a gym mat that is lower. Study each one to know them in detail. Now 3.3 .3 describes in detail how to teach learners to perform cartwheels. You will understand that it is of utmost importance that a teacher should know exactly how to teach learners this to prevent, to prevent injuries. In 3.4 uh, discuss uh, the discussion how to teach them headstands and handstands are described. Make sure to know the procedures well and in detail in 3.4. The first point will be that they should be perform the, it on the floor to keep safe. They should work in pairs. One holds the other person's legs as they stand upside down. Make the whole body straight and so forth. Study the procedure point by point not to leave out important information. It is also important to know that different gymnastic balancing activities like balancing the whole body head spring, hand spring, Arab spring, etc. You have to know all these activities by name. The same goes for rope climbing, as described in 3.7, which can be quite dangerous if learners do not know the exact technique. Study the 100% correct technique in 3.7. When performing floor routine with music, certain apparatus are required, like ribbons, clubs, hoops, ropes, or balls. And for that you see 3.8. The music is chosen by the gymnast and his or her coach. These exercises combine elements of ballet, of gymnastics, dance and apparatus manipulation. Manipulation meaning to use apparatus in certain ways. The gymnast can leap 
balance, pirouette, that means spinning on one foot, flex and also execute artistic <coughs> effects. It can be done by individuals or groups because they have to perform under immense pressure. They must be able to stay calm and cool under pressure. They also need to be excellent with balancing, with flexibility, coordination, with strength and also flair. And these facts a teacher should know, so study them all in detail. The last point is 3.9, where gymnastic exercises with all the proper equipment are set out in detail. And also study this in detail. That is 3.9. So let's go to unit 4 now. In this unit, the training issues for upper primary athletes and also the management of sport events are discussed. First of all, read through the learning outcomes, meaning what the content of the, this unit is all about. Then look at the learning activities to know how questions can be asked in the exams about this content. 4.1 describes why sport builds character. Can you think of reasons for this? Why sport builds character? It builds physical endurance. Can you think how? It strengthens goal setting. Why? It promotes moral habits. Can you think why? It helps with concentration, with confidence, control and commitment. Again, can you think why? I ask the questions every time for you to think about the reasons. Now turn to 4.1 and see whether you could answer them correctly. In 4.3, the way to coach the starting technique in athletics is described. Now starting te uh, technique, the first one to look at is the on your marks technique. The athlete should stand upright. The toe of the front foot should be just before the starting line and the back of the foot should be at about the heel of the right foot and the arms should hang loose to the side. That is the on your marks technique. This is the correct technique and should be known in detail by the coach. Otherwise, the wrong technique will be used by the athlete. So let us look at the set technique now. Push the opposite arm to the front leg forward and lean slightly forward to place the weight on the ball of the front foot. Lastly, the go technique. Drive off front leg and swing front arm back to take the first stride. Begin with small strides and then accelerate to full speed. I'm again going to say that the starting techniques meaning the on your marks command, the set command and the go command and you have to know each technique. So you will notice that it is not just stand and start running but certain proven techniques which should be taught correctly by the coach. Do you know them in detail? Please study them. Turn to 4.8 where relay handover methods are explained. There are two to be studied, namely the non-visual downward baton that is the stick used during relays, hand over. Meaning the receiver acts on instruction from the giver without looking back. And the second one is the visual baton hand over. That's looking backwards to receive the baton from the giver. 
studied to know them each in detail. The non-visual downward baton without looking back and the visual baton handover looking backwards to receive the baton. Certain types of athletic events require certain specific kinds of exercises so to improve their performance. So in 4.9, the specific exercises beneficial for specifically a hurdle runner are described to improve performance. Study to know them. There are three specific exercises described to be done by hurdle runners. Let us turn to 4.15, where exercises beneficial for a shot put athlete are discussed. That differs from the hurdle runner, and that's very important. We discussed the job of a coach several times now, but what qualities should a coach have, a good coach have? Give yourself a few moments to think about the qualities of a good coach. Have you thought about the following qualities? Deep understanding of the sport, how the sport should be trained, know what equipment is required, he or she should be a motivator, have effective communication skills, should be of a, a good character and always be an example to his or her athletes, even in difficult situations. He or she should be disciplined, stick to the code of contact, uh, conduct, conduct, etc. There are many more. Study to know them as set out in 4.20. The last heading discussed in this unit is the planning, the organizing and executing of a school athletics or sport event. Many times it is required from the physical education teacher to plan and execute such an event and it requires certain important issues to be taken care of. Like before the event, all the names, the surnames and birth dates of children who will be taking part should be recorded accurately. Can you think why? Read the answer in 4.21. Also, the learners, and learners need to be divided into teams. The track should have clearly marked lanes to run in. Why do you think this is? The helpers should be found and informed timely what is expected from them. Parents should be informed about the event. In fact, there are many, many more things to be taken care of before a successful event can take place. Read and study them all in 4.21. Now again, Turn to the answers of the learning activities and see whether you have answered the questions correctly. We're finished with Unit 4 now, so let's go to Unit 5, where sport skills and rules are discussed. Various techniques in different kinds of sports are discussed here. Important is to look in 5.2 how to coach learners to catch a cricket ball correctly. If caught wrongly, it can be dropped or cause injury. The correct technique is the learner should stand with the feet shoulder width apart and should lean the torso, that's the body, slightly forward. He or she should be in a slightly hunched over position with the feet firmly planted on the ground. Arms hang loosely in front of the body and keep hands slightly cupped. As the ball approaches, bring the hands together and keep them cupped. Then cup them around the ball 
firmly. Use one hand or, if preferred, two hands. The ball must be caught before it touches the ground. A good way to remember these techniques, I suggest, would be to make yourself a drawing of the way of doing the action, to remember it better, giving attention to all the details. In 5.3, the technique to coach learners to bat is set out. Study this also. Then also should a coach know the rules of the games. In 5.3, the rules of cricket are described in detail. This is very important to know in order to be a successful coach. So study the rules of cricket in detail to know them all. The same goes for the technique of passing and kicking a rugby ball in 5.7. Also, study the rules of rugby as set out in 5.7. In 5.8, the coaching of passing and catching a netball ball are described in detail and should also be studied and known. In all physical activities, the risk of injuries are present. So a PE teacher should know how to act effectively when an accident or injury happens on the playground. Firstly, assess if the child can be moved and the extent of the injury. If you do move the child, do not let the other learners unattended, but call another adult to look after them. Call the child's, child's parents immediately. If the injury just needs a plaster or an ointment, administer it. Call a doctor or take the child to a doctor or hospital if this is what is required. After the child has been taken to the doctor, release the child in the parent's care. Make sure to write out an incident report to indicate and record what happened. Keep this report in the child's record card and let the principal know what has occurred. These procedures can be viewed in 5.12 and are of utmost importance. Unit 6 is about games to develop fitness and sport skills, meaning that a PE teacher can teach learners certain games to improve their fitness and sport skills but they should be aimed at achieving that and not only any random goal against to play. Therefore, the PE teacher should acquaint him or her about the appropriate games to be played. We are only going to concentrate on a few kinds, namely team relays and races in 6.5, traditional African games in 6.6 .6, and what kind of games are for pairs as described in 6.1, what kind of games are for large groups 6.2, small groups in 6.3 and tag and dodging games as described in 6.4. To identify which games are for pairs are not very difficult. When only two people can compete with each other, these are appropriate games like tennis or squash or chess, etc. See 6.1 for all. Large groups will be soccer, hockey, rugby, volleyball, etc. And see 6.2 for that. Small groups will be the numbers game, the arithmetic group, the alphabet group, etc. See 6.3 for a description of each and study them. 
Tag and dodging games include partner tag, merry-go-round, fake and take, etc. Read about them in 6.4 and study them. You should also know what the different relay races and games entail, like a boat race relay, tunnel relay, ball carrying relay, and wall bounce relay. Make sure to study them as set out in 6.5. In 6.6, .6, the different traditional African games are explained. Make sure to know how each one is played, because they can be played with great success during physical education lessons, and the teacher should teach them correctly to the learners. Teachers should also be able to do a lesson preparation based on a game as set out in 6.8. But there are certain specific elements needed in succeeding the lesson, like firstly, the kind of game, remember it's based on a game, the kind of game should be decided upon. Then the teacher should decide what equipment will be needed. The structure of the lesson is important. In other words, how you will introduce the game, how many different activities will be presented, etc. Make sure all the learners are involved in the game. So rethink group management strategies. Determine how and what you will use to assess the learner's skills. Physical education is very much about assessing learners' skills and not only playing games. Make sure to have fun during the lesson. Use the lesson plan to present a successful lesson. All these important issues are set out in 6.8. To maintain order during a physical education lesson is very important because it is a less formal environment and how to maintain discipline during such a lesson are set out in 6.9. Make sure to know 6.9 by heart. Lastly, a year plan is described in 6.10. A physical education teacher should not only work aimlessly, but with certain goals, that is plans in mind, in order to achieve certain long-term and short-term goals. Make sure to acquaint yourself with 6.10 in this regard. So let's turn to Unit 7, where dance activities are discussed in detail. In 7.3, it is explained in detail how moving according to rhythm can be applied successfully. Firstly, underlying beat, which is a steady, continuous sound in a rhythmical sequence. Children should listen and then respond to the beat. Secondly, the rhythmic pattern is important. Tempo has to do with the speed of the music and movement. Then accent is explained. Accent refers to the emphasis given to a beat. In conclusion, intensity is discussed. This is the quality of the music in terms of its loudness or softness. I only touched on the headings, make sure to understand and know each heading as set out in 7.3. In 7.5, the value of dancing with style is discussed in detail. Certain skills are developed when dance take place, takes place, like flexibility, strength, endurance, and balance. Why this happens during Dancing with Style is also explained in 7.5. Read to understand and know the detail. Noise 
usually too loud, can pose serious threats to children. It could interfere with speech and language development. It could impair hearing. It could impair learning. It could result in permanent hearing loss. Could disturb the cardiovascular system in children and it could disturb their sleep. So what can be do done about it? Read and study 7.6 to find out. The last unit, Unit 8, is about health promotion. Firstly, read through the learning outcomes like all the previous units. You will find a good overview what content you will find in the unit while reading through them. Then, like all the pre previous units, try to answer the questions of the learning activities to test yourself whether you know the content. After you've done this on your own, turn to the end of the unit to test yourself. What you did not know about them should be studied by you. Let us turn to 8.2, where the systems in the body and their functions are set out. This content is very important. Know the different systems of the body by name, but also their functions. I'm only going to touch on one. You should study them all. The digestive system is used to break down food and absorb the needed nutrients. It includes, that's the system, the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, and the large and small intestines. The esophagus is the canal which connects the throat with the stomach. In this way, you should know every system, what each one consists of and their functions. The body consists of nine systems. You will find a complete table in 8.2 regarding this. Physical education is about teaching learners to be healthy and fit. So do you know the consequences of being unhealthy and unfit? It increases your chances of developing illnesses such as heart diseases, cardiovascular diseases, strokes, some cancers, diabetes and more illnesses. When pure, uh, poor nutrition occurs, overweight and obesity increases. The body's immune system cannot perform its functions efficiently and there are many dangers of a lack of exercising, like people, people are at risk of developing heart diseases. When exercising regularly, the risk of heart diseases is reduced. It, it also helps to recover from heart attacks and it helps people to lose weight and helps not to be at risk of for many diseases due to lifestyle choices. It also reduces stress when exercising regularly. It clears your mind. It can burn off extra energy and it helps you to relax which have a direct influence on stress. There are more than enough proof that children also should be involved in regular exercising and the PE teacher is responsible in teaching this active lifestyle to the learners. See 8.4 for these facts. Physical education is also about teaching the importance of hygiene to learners. In 8.5, many important facts about this issue are discussed, like oral hygiene, hand washing, nails and hair care. All these should be taught to learners to be part of their daily life. Make sure to acquaint yourself with the details in 8.5. As mentioned earlier, a balanced diet contributes to a healthy body and the benefits of a healthy body can be found in 8.8. .8. What is a balanced diet? It is about eating all kinds of food to provide the body with all the nutrients needed 
for its daily functioning. You will not run the risk of being overweight and developing diseases like diabetes or gout. Read and study all the facts in 8.8 to know and understand the importance of a balanced diet. Now, this concludes my discussion regarding the most important facts in your study guide. As mentioned previously, make it your priority to study right throughout the year, consistently and every day, even if only for half an hour, but every day. In conclusion to the presentation, I would like to mention a few important facts regarding your coming exams. Please take note of them. Please take note that you only need to study your study guide for these exams. Before you study the actual content, you first need to acquaint yourself with the learning outcomes of each unit. These learning outcomes form the core of the studies and guide you through the content and can be found at the beginning of each unit. After you've studied this, you will know what the unit is all about. Thereafter, you must look at the learning activities which follow the learning outcomes. It will be wise to do all these activities to the best of your ability before looking at the answers at the end of each unit. The study guide contains adequate information and facts. It is not necessary to study from any other source for the exams. Remember to also study your assignment for the exams. Remember that when answering a question, facts from the different parts of the study guide can be applicable. It is not necessarily limited to one part of the guide. It is important to note that although physical and health education may seem as a non-exam subject for learners and a period where learners are encouraged to explore in a less formal environment, you as teacher should exactly know how to keep them busy and how and why certain activities should be presented. Therefore, the teacher should know certain facts about the subject, PHE, as well as the correct procedures regarding the presentation of physical and health education. It is therefore of utmost importance that you as student teacher should know facts regarding the subject. I stress this because some students are of the opinion that this subject does not need to be studied for and then they do poorly in the exams. Take note to know your study guide in order to present adequate facts during the exams. In conclusion, just a few hints for the exams. Write ne neatly and legibly. You may use blue or black pen. Please do not even consider being dishonest. If found out, you will receive a zero for the question paper. You may not leave the exam room before 30 minutes have expired. If you, you do leave, you may not come back to continue answering the question paper. You may not leave the exam venue during the last 15 minutes of the exams. Remember to sign the checklist. No smoking or eating is allowed in the room. Only paper provided by the invigilator will be accepted. So if you need more paper to answer questions, ask them to provide you with a paper. If you turn up 30 minutes after the exams have started, you will not be allowed to write and this will result in no turn up. Make sure to know what is expected of you when a question is asked. Read through the action verbs at the beginning of your study guide. For example, define means you have to give the precise, brief meaning of something, while describe means you have to give a detailed feature of an issue. Please take note that short answer questions will be asked and the following kinds of questions can be asked. To fall in words, which is left out. For example, I give you an example, a 
what is used during relay races? The correct answer you will have to fill in is baton. Second one is definitions of certain terminology, for example, strength. Strength is the ability of the body to exert a maximum force against a force external to the body. So you have to know definitions. The third one, to choose and underline the correct answer. For example, the question will be, the immune system consists of, and then a choice is given, white blood cells or the thyroid. White blood cells should be underlined then. The correct answer is then, the immune system consists of white blood cells. Another type of question is where you are given two columns, column A and column B. In column A, there are uh, quite a few points, like for one, international health problems. Two, speed. Three, chocolates and sweets. And in column B, A is not a healthy option to eat. B is HIV. C is the ability to move from one place to another in the shortest possible time. Now you have to connect column A with column B, the correct answer. So, The correct answer will be then 1B, HIV, 2C, the ability to move from one place to another in the shortest time possible, 3, chocolates and sweet, which is not a healthy option. But you only fill in the correct letters. Do not write out the words. Please feel free to contact me regarding any uncertainties and questions you have about your subject. Good luck with the exams. You will be rewarded for hard work and dedication.